future mothers, the past mothers, and the current mothers a very, very happy Mother's Day. The scripture is taken from Philippians 4, 4 to 9, and it reads, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything tell god what you need and thank him for all that he has done then you will experience god's presence peace which exceeds anything we can understand his peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in christ jesus and now dear brothers and sisters one final thing fix your thought on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learn and receive from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Dear Heavenly Father, the Father of our Savior, the Father that keeps us on the right track. The Father that does all things for us. Heavenly Father, we'd like to start off by saying that we honor you. We appreciate the fact that you give us a chance to worship you and give you all the praise, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for giving us your darling son, Jesus Christ, that made this all possible. Thank you for health, life, and strength. Thank you for giving us the ability to get up and walk, talk, communicate with each other, and the ability to love and understand. Heavenly Father, continue, continue to give us the strength to allow us to just understand you more, understand your word more, and listen to your, your preacher preach the gospel, Heavenly Father. And Father, thank you for the mothers. Thank you for all our parents. Thank you for all the things that you continue to do for us, Heavenly Father. There are more things than we can even think about. But I'd like to just point out that we'd like to thank you for giving us the ability to, to still worship, Heavenly Father. In these times of trouble, Heavenly Father, you have not taken that away from us, Heavenly Father. In some countries, Heavenly Father, they're not, they don't have that ability to do so, Heavenly Father. But here, Heavenly Father, we still do that, and we do it greatly, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for our families. Thank you for 
giving us the air to breathe. Thank you for our jobs. Thank you for our homes. Thank you for our vehicles. Thank you for the ability to get out and work and, and earn and uh, just help take care of our family, everybody. everybody. Thank you for Lake Ida. Thank you for its members. Thank you for those that will become members. Thank you for giving us uh, just the insight that we can show others what thus says the Lord, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for our minister. Thank you for his family, Heavenly Father. Thank, Heavenly Father, thank you for forgiving us of all of our sins, Heavenly Father. We try to do what we, we know is best, Heavenly Father, but we know we fall short of, of your glory, Heavenly Father. But we still strive to do what you would have us to do, Heavenly Father. But Heavenly Father, before we close, I'd just like to again uh, thank the mothers that will be celebrating with us today. Thank the mothers that have gone on, that have passed away, Heavenly Father. But thank you for their memories, Heavenly Father, because they are special to us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the future mothers, the young ones that are maybe teenagers now, but will be young adults in the future, Heavenly Father. Just, just continue to bless them. Bless all the children, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, as we prepare to close, we'd like to say thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, that again made this all possible on this Mother's Day that we celebrate. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. No, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. I'm so by and by. by. Feel a little prayer will turn him. Will no little fires burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Us, Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. And by. And by. Feel a little prayer will turn you in. No little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Find a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Find a little talk with Jesus. Find a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Just a little little talk with Him makes me oh. Find a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Find a little talk with Jesus. Find a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Jesus with Jesus makes it right. Ooh. Good morning, God's people. 
Once again, our God has been kind unto us, extending unto us this marvelous privilege, this day to be alive, to be living, to be in the land of the living and not in the land of the dead. Welcome to another day that the Lord hath made. And the Bible tells us that we should be, we should rejoice and be glad in it. As a holy day, today is the Lord's day. And as a secularly recognized holiday, today is what we know as Mother's Day. A Mother's Day is an especially important day. A day that uh, no one will argue seriously outranks Father's Day. Amen. You can say amen when you can. You know that's true. Mother's Day, a day where we recognize and celebrate those special people who uh, loved us, who nurtured us, those people who taught us, and those people who mothered us. Even to my mother this morning, Ann Spivey, I want to say happy Mother's Day unto you and make sure you're treating my father well. Amen, amen, amen. Specifically, uh, today I want to speak about a class of women who for the most part are mothers. Uh, our text this morning is Titus chapter two. Titus chapter two. Uh, in this periphery um, of scripture, Paul introduces the proper organization and learning structure for the local church. He introduces the learning structure, uh, the organization for the learning structure of the local church. Specifically, uh, here he tells, uh, in Titus 2 here, he tells the young preacher Titus that it is his responsibility, his responsibility, the young preacher of the church, he tells him that it is his responsibility to educate and to discipline, get this, the whole church. He goes through the list of the older men, the younger men, the, the older women, the younger women, what to tell the men, what to tell the women. He tells them, he tells him it's his responsibility to educate, train the whole church. Notice the authority. Notice the authority given to Titus. In verse number 15 of Titus chapter 2, he says, You must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have the authority to correct them when necessary. So don't let anyone disregard what you say. Paul names a special group of individuals for our text this morning. He names a special group of individuals. Beginning at verse number three, he says, teach the older women. Teach the older women to be reverent in their behavior, not slanderers, not given to wine, teachers of what is good. In particular, Paul tells Titus, to teach, verse four, teach the older women, to teach the younger women. You've got to get that. Teach the older women to teach the younger women, watch this, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, workers at home, kind, obedient to their husbands. Oh, we won't even deal with that one today. We'll leave that one for another another day. I don't want to get you all in an uproar on Mother's Day. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Here's our subject for this morning. Mentors of good things. Mentors of good things. In this narrative, we discover a God-breathed exhortation a God-breathed exhortation. Oh, I need to tell you that the Bible is inspired. You know that. The Bible is inspired. But watch this. The Constitution of the United States is not. 
Oh, can I say that again just to cause some controversy here? The Bible is inspired. The Constitution of the United States is not. I say that because we live in a time when so-called evangelical religious people who storm Capitol buildings give more respect to the Constitution than they do the word of God. That's the society that we live in. We care more about what society has to say, the constitution, than we do about matters that where God speaks and has something to say. We would be better people, I say, if we read more Bible and less constitution. The inspired word this morning, the inspired word this morning, this God-breathed exhortation this morning, is that older women are uniquely qualified to mentor younger women. They are uniquely qualified to mentor younger women. This makes sense because the older women have a treasure chest of life experience from which to pull an abundance of wisdom. The older women can mentor younger women using the skill sets they have collected from both their successes in life and their failures in life. Oh, but there's a mentor criteria. Before I give you uh, our, our points this morning, you need to understand there is a mentor criteria. You see, firstly, everyone is not qualified to mentor. Even if you meet the age requirement, even if you are old enough, according to our text, everyone is not qualified to mentor. Every older woman is not qualified to mentor the younger woman. Verse three, list three things here, starting in verse three, three things are listed, three criterium are listed. First of all, reverent in behavior. The Bible says that these older women who teach the younger women should be reverent in behavior. The Greek word rendered in behavior here includes dress, appearance, conversation, internal um, manner, spirit. Um, you have to be a certain kind of person. Not everyone is qualified. Every older woman is qualified to mentor the younger woman. Then number two, it says not slanderers, not slanderers. You see, the apostle knew that a temptation for older women can be that your later years become resentment years, regret years, prudeness years, bitterness years, less happy years, less amiable years, negative life reflection years. And so he says that um, um, none of us, this is what you need to understand, none of us go through life without being hurt and damaged. But these mentoring older women must come out of life on the other side, on the older side, with the right attitude. Yes, you go through things. We all go through things. But those who are qualified to teach the younger women must come out of those experiences with the right attitude. Not a negative talker, not a slanderer, not a tongue murderer, not a slanderer. Verse three says, watch it. Verse three says, not negative talkers, not slanderers, but teachers of what is good. You may have had past experiences, not good, but when it comes to teaching the younger women, what you must teach is to be teachers of what is good. Good. And then number three in this criteria, it says not given to wine. We don't have to go into that one in detail. Not given to wine. We want someone teaching this older woman, teaching the younger woman needs to be someone who is clothed, um, as the Bible states in phrases, clothed and in 
her right mind. Sober-minded. Control, in control of your emotions. Uh, you see, alcohol uh, is a filter remover. Uh, I said alcohol is a filter remover. Alcohol will remove the filter and things will come out wrongly. Things will come out too, uh, um, too deeply. Um, uh, 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 experiences, self-experiences will come out that, that may um, impair the relationship between the teacher, um, the mentor, and the one being 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 taught. And so here in our lesson this morning, um, um, here in this periphery of text, Paul mentions seven lessons that older women are to teach the younger women. And we're only going to consider three of those this morning for this study. Seven things Paul talks about, um, but we're only going to look at three of them. First of all, number one, in verse number four, he says, I want the older women to teach the younger women, watch this, to love their husbands. Oh, teach these younger women to love their husbands. Now, I found it interesting that the younger women ought to be taught to love their husbands. Um, uh, a surface, if you just look at this from the surface, surface thought would suggest that no one gets as excited about love as a younger woman. So why would they need to be taught to love their husbands? You see, this love that these older women are to teach the younger women is not the starry eyed oxytocin hormone spine tingling love that needs uh, um, it's not the kind of love that where the hearts um, um, jump over the moon and, and fly along the rainbows that young women instinctively feel that's not the love that needs to be taught young women will instinctively naturally feel that kind of love. You see, the love that needs to be taught is godly love. Uh, let me say that again. The love that these older women are to teach the younger women for their husbands is a godly love. Uh, the love that loves when love is not being returned. Teach them the love that is able to separate emotions from reality. Teach them to love the kind of love that loves not based upon the husband's actions, but based upon Christ. Teach them the love that will love because the Lord first loved us. Teach them, older women, teach the younger women to love. The older women will need to encourage young wives to love their ridiculously immature husbands. Young husbands are crazy. They are immature. They are worldly minded. And God said, God wants the older women to train the younger women to love these husbands at this immature stage, this difficult time in their lives and to love them even when it's difficult, even when he's not all that he should be, even when he does wrong, even when uh, her friends and her family are telling him to walk out, leave him, don't take that, love him still. Older women teach the younger women, younger wives to love their husbands. Secondly, in verse four, very strange as I looked at this text, teach them to love their children. Older women have the responsibility of teaching the younger women to love their children. Now, most women who have children honestly and naturally 
love them. They have no problem protecting them, feeding them, and nurturing them. However, the Apostle Paul is implying another kind of love in this text. This type of love, um, this type of love, affection, and attention has to be taught. There is a kind of love that has to be taught. It's not a chemical love. It's a commandment love. That's what we have to understand about love in general when the love action is coming from God. When God says love, he's not talking about a feeling. God is commanding us to love based upon some other thing that is indisputable that we cannot argue like the blood of Jesus Christ, what the Lord did for us, what God has done for us. When God says love, it is a commandment. It is not about feelings. And so the older women are to teach the younger women a type of love that has nothing to do with the feelings of them being their children. It is the love that engages in the spiritual, get this, this love engages in the spiritual shaping of the next generation. You've got to love your children in order to shape them spiritually for the next generation. Uh, uh, I'm shaping them spiritually. If you love them, shape them spiritually. If you love your little girls, don't just teach them about nails and hair. Teach them about Jesus. If you love your boys, don't just buy him video games and make him happy. Teach these children about God. Shape them um, uh, with Bible study. Shape them to attend Sunday school and Bible classes. Shape them to attend worship service. Shape them to love the Lord, to love his word, to love the church. Love your children, younger mothers, by shaping them to love God. And it's, somebody has to teach the children. Somebody has to teach the young boys and the young girls that they have a savior. That way, when they go through life and trouble comes and problems come, they will know that they're not alone. They know that they have a God that is on their side. They know that weeping may endure for a night, but when you're a child of God, joy comes in the morning. Someone has to teach them, and that responsibility is given to the older women to teach the younger women to love their children. Oh, this morning, finally, the third point that we're going to look at Teach them to be older women. Teach the younger women to be discreet or to be sensible. To be discreet or to be sensible. Verse number five. Now, I know that this, um, this kind of teaching that I'm doing this morning is not popular in our society. But I'm not talking to society um, um, necessarily this morning. I'm not talking to society. I'm not talking to the corporate World, I'm not talking to uh, uh, what um, 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 people have thought um, around the world, their views and opinions this morning. I'm talking about what the word of God has to say on these matters. And I could care less how society tries to, um, tries to shape this narrative. You see, God made people, God made marriage, God made relationships, and we must live by God's rules, God's way. When God returns, husbands will have, will have to stand and face God for the responsibilities he left them. Wives, women will have to stand and face God for the responsibilities he left them. Children will have to stand and face God for the responsibilities that he left them unto them. God is not concerned about what society says. God is concerned about what he said. Therefore, we should be concerned about the things that God 
has to say. And so the older women here finally are taught to, are told to teach the younger women to be discreet, to be, to be sensible. Um, 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 this message this morning is not for women of the world or society in general. This message is for women of God. This message is for women filled with the Holy Ghost. This message is for women who fear God. This message is for women who tremble at the word of God. That's who I'm talking to. That's who I'm teaching uh, to this morning. The subject matter specifically here, discreet and sensible, that needs to be taught here is how to be, teach them how to be self-controlled. Teach these younger women how to be self-controlled. Or teach them how to be sober-minded, to think soberly. Oh, there, there was a time before social media uh, where some women didn't tell all of their business. They were discreet about their business. Young women, like anyone else, can be led into sin and to forsake their God-given responsibility. But God says, I want a group of women, older women, there with the experience to teach them, to keep them from falling into these snares and these traps. It is the responsibility of older women to teach young women to exercise control, sober-mindedness. Whose responsibility is that? Older women. It's older women's responsibility to teach young women control, control over their actions, control over their thoughts, control over their emotions so that they will not become easy targets for the devil. Some of these areas of control are control over food, control over money in her relationship, control over her jealousies control over gossip, control over the lure of a worldly lifestyle, the hair, the nails, the shoes, the fashion, the expensive styling of clothing. Um, 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 the Bible makes it clear in 1 Peter chapter 3 and 4, um, the older women must teach the younger women to develop, watch this, the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit that must be taught that must be taught and then it says which is precious in the sight of God young women need to be taught that it is not about being precious in the sight of society but precious in the sight of of God. I know that we live in a mind your own business society. I know that's the kind of world that we live in. Even in the church, people um, 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 have this thought process, I better mind my own uh, business. But those of you who fall into the category of the older women still have a serious responsibility. The younger women are not going to learn these lessons from our society. They're not going to learn these lessons from their peers or secular counselors who don't know God. Let me say that again. Or secular counselors who do not know God. Oh, the apostle told the young preacher to tell the older women to mentor the young women. Tell them about, you, you might say, what can I tell them, preacher? What can I teach them? Well, tell them about the money you wasted over the years and wish you had saved more. Brought, bought some property and invested. Tell them that it was a prayer that kept your family, uh, it was prayer that kept your family safe and protected over the years. Tell them about when you realized that your husband was just a man and needed forgiveness just like anyone else. 
tell them that it might not be a good idea to have family members who involved in the business of their home. Oh, we need some older women to tell the younger women that patience, sweetness, domestic skills, and adoring your husband still works. Tell them that when you fight for your home, it makes hell nervous. Tell them that an encouraging woman can make a man pull a freight train. Tell them that when you bring your children up in the church, it breaks generational curses and proves the statistics wrong. Tell them that you submitted to your husband because God said so. End of story, period. Tell them about God's love. Tell them about the long ways that God brought you from where he brought you from to where you are now. Tell them about what makes relationships successful. Teach them how to handle the finances of the home. Teach them how to have a proper relationship with their husbands. Love your husband. Love your children. Be sensible. Be discreet mentors of good things, mentors of good things. People of God, especially mothers today on this Mother's Day, may God bless you all. May God love you, continue to love you, and may he bless you exceedingly well. for